And I do a lot of different things around the Joomla project. Um, and I used to uh, work um, a lot for OSM. And now I do a lot around the production working group, both on the Bug Squad side and on the platform side. So um, one of the things I think is really exciting, as if you were at the Lightning Talk, you could probably tell, is this idea of unified content model and what it's going to mean for the future of the CMS. Oh, yeah, yeah, excellent. What it means for the future of the CMS. And a lot of people have asked me, you know, what does this mean? And I kind of felt like, you know, those of us who are willing and brave enough to go, like, read the platform code, and it's not even in the platform yet because it's actually in the eBay SF repository over at um, GitHub. Uh, a lot of us who, who, you know, maybe are brave enough to do that, but it's also a little bit intimidating to have to do that. And um, so people have kind of asked me also at my user group, what does this mean, unified content model? Is it something that's just going to make my life difficult? Is it really a great thing? Um, and so I thought, let's do a session that's really about unified content model, not on the application computer science level, but on, I mean, not on the platform level of like what theoretically it means, but what does it mean at a, as a practical matter for the CMS and CMS users? For people who you know want to understand what's going on inside the CMS, but maybe aren't um, developing, you know, uh, developing for the platform. So the first question I talked about this at the talk is like, what is UCM? So, <coughs> and it seems like UCM actually, you'll see different people use the initials to mean different things. So uh, Lewis uh, Landry usually calls it unified content model, and I think uh, a bunch of people use that. But then Andrew Eddy always calls it the universal content model. But it's the same idea, unified universal, that we would have one content model instead of many, many different content models like we do now. And um, as I said in the lightning talk, you know, it does, this idea of a model does mean different things. It means a set of APIs. It means a, a lot of ideas about the future. But what I'm really going to focus on right now is how does it help us think about content, what content is, how to manage it, and um, some of the other things that we will talk about, some of the more, how do you implement it in a practical way um, in the session tomorrow the working group session tomorrow. Um, so the unified content model says, what is content? Content is basically everything. If you see it rendered on a page, that's content. And that's how your users look at a page. And this is one thing, we, when we're building a Joomla site, we tend to you get into this model of thinking of pieces. You have your main body where the component is. You have these boxes called modules. Maybe you have some other things. You have your template. We see it as all these separate elements. But they're actually, for the user, from the user's point of view, it's a page. It's one page. That's the content of the page. The page is made up of many pieces, but they're all together. So, but when we do think about content, most of the time, I would say also, in the content model, it's thinking not about things like the template, like not the, pre the strictly presentational design elements, but more of the um, data and information that's being pushed into the browser. So the unified content model isn't by itself like restructuring 
the model view controller and it's not rethinking uh, how does search work. Those are, are kind of back end things. It's, it's really thinking just about the content itself and what's getting pushed to the page. Although that means it involves all these other elements as well. So in 2.5, you could say we have the disunified content model or the chaotic content model. But basically, um, as we were working on 2.5, going from 1.5 to 2.5, which I was very active in, I was also active in going in the last few months of going from 1.0 to 1.5, um, but especially from 1.5 to 2.5, we worked hard to try to think about a certain, there's 37 extensions that make up the CMS at last count. Uh, you don't realize that usually because when you're in the admin, you don't think of those, all those separate things as extensions. So there's basically a set of extensions that we call the content extensions. So that would be, come content would be obvious, come web links, come uh, contacts, uh, news feeds, but then you can, hmm? Banners. banners. And I think banners, it's really, I'm going to say later, banners, it's really, really important to think about com banners uh, when we think about unified content. Because com banners is actually like at the avant garde of thinking about what content can mean. And, um, but also, user profiles would be another thing. Um, so we think of those, at, but we, we haven't really been thinking of user profiles as content, but we could be thinking of user profiles as content. And we haven't really been thinking of modules as content, but we could be thinking of modules as content. So in, in 2.5, we basically have this set of five to six, what we call content type extensions. Yes? And about the category, is it Yeah, uh, well. So in 2.5, we don't think of category as a content, as content. We think of a ca as category as just a container for content and a way of structuring content. We don't think of it as content in itself, except for the fact that it has a description, right? So, so this is another aspect of how 2.5 thinks about things in, in a disunified content in a disunified way. We don't think of Categories only exist actually in the context of another content extension, right? Category, com categories cannot be invoked without an, ex a, an extension being evo invoked, right? You always have to have extension equals. It does, it, it's, it's a kind of mystical thing that it can only exist if another ex extension exists. So, um, that, that's a funny aspect of how we think about it. But what we did in 2.5, with some resistance, but we work, a group of us worked really hard to, at least for those five extensions, to standardize what was going on in those extensions. So we worked hard to make the data structure much more consistent. We worked hard to make the user interface as consistent as possible, all the toolbars be the same buttons in the same order, you know, and if you had copy save to new in articles, you would have save to new in everywhere else. Uh, content events running in all content types. So that was a big change from, from 1.5, because in 1.5, a lot of plugins could only run in articles. But then in 2.5, we, we rethought, what does the content group entail? The content group entails all of these content extensions. And then you have the idea of a context. So the content extensions run, but sometimes they're only going to apply in certain contexts. But they're all content. Um, and we also did things to make content a lot more flexible in 2.5. And some of that was right out at 1.6, and some of it emerged later. later. So we have alternative layouts. Um, in addition, you know, as we all know, in 1.5, you could have a template override, but it was all or nothing. So if you have a template and you put an override in there, you changed it everywhere. And that was it. And in 2.5, we said, you can have alternative layouts. You could have articles, but laid out in different ways, and um, depending on the use case for that particular article. So it made output the rendered page potentially much more flexible, much more interesting. And you can see if you've 
If you've looked at the sample data, you can see examples of that where we worked to, um, well, we used come contacts to make the fruit encyclopedia, and we used an alternative layout to create to something that looks totally different than the typical contact page. So um, we really wanted that flexibility to give people the flexibility to think about content not as falling in rigid things and not always having to have the same pattern and empowering them to be able to present in different ways. And then the least, the la in 2.5 we introduced the images and URLs feature and that gave you the ability to basically uh, have a fixed layout of uh, like an intro text image and a full text image. In, it's only in articles, unfortunately, uh, but um, and I can explain why that is, but uh, it's, uh, and we also, you could enter a set of URLs and style them as you want. And so that, again, is just introducing some way of kind of saying you could standardize different types of layouts. You could have a standardized layout. You can use CSS to actually make multiple different standardized layouts. And it can really be much more flexible even in the Joomla core. So we worked hard to try to make it both more unified and consistent and more flexible. But there's clearly some serious limitations with doing that. Um, so why is it a problem the way we're handling it now with all these different content um, extensions? Well, the first thing is lots of duplicated code, right? We're shipping a lot more code than we need to ship because we're shipping you know, an administrative layout for each one of these separate extensions and an administrative module, model and a, and a form for editing. Um, why? They all look exactly the same. I mean, every user could tell you it looks exactly the same. A user would think probably that they are the same. But we're shipping a lot of code to maintain separate MVCs for web links, for news feeds, and for articles, and for banners. And we really don't need to. And not only is it a, making the package of Joomla bigger, it's a pain to maintain. I mean, I can say this from the Bug Squad perspective and from someone who writes features perspective. If you want to fix something, you have to fix it in five places every time. And you don't necessarily have time to do that. That's one reason images and URLs is not in every extension. Because we got it done for articles, but then we, well, by the time it was finally all tested and polished and ready to go for articles, it was really no time left to try to see what we could implement with that in other extensions. And another thing I said in the talk before was about why is it that we can only uh, feature, I, I, we can only have featured layouts for articles and for contacts and not for web links and news feeds. Same thing, like ran out of time because we would have had to do a whole separate set of, a whole separate set of models and of views and controllers for those things. So it's just a huge burden and waste of time and it's actually inhibiting us from doing those things. And the, the other example I would point out, why is it that we can edit articles and web links from the front end, but we can't end up edit contacts and we can't edit news feeds from the front end. Well, it's really, there is no reason, there's no inherent reason except that someone has to, would have to build those forms and build those models. And it's a lot of work, it's, it's fraught with bugs, it's possibilities, many ways that it could break. And it's, but in the end, it's also just repeating a lot of the same code that we already have in articles and web links. So it's, it's really, inhibiting us and it's hard to maintain. It's making change harder than it needs to be. Um, it's also not simple to explain to users necessarily why you have all these different types and what, what they mean and why can't you do, I'm, I'm sure many people have had the experience of, of trying to explain to someone, why is it I can't edit my contact information in the front end? Why do I need a whole separate form? We have this crazy profile system with a whole separate form in which you can enter your phone number and your address and your website using a user profile, yet we have this whole contact table over here with those exact same fields and they can't talk to each other. So it doesn't make sense, and it's not simple to explain. It's not very flexible. So um, 
if you look at all those content types and you ask, fundamentally, how different are they? You see, not very. They all have a certain set of common fields already, although sometimes they have slightly different names for them, which is another a legacy of, call, of having all these separate content things, is having published and state, right? Um, why and how many times have people just gotten, you know, you, try, you think you finished something and it's working and it's working and then it's not working, it's because you went and did it with published when you needed to change it to state or whatever. So um, we have ID, of course, title, um, a, uh, alias, some kind, every one of these content types has some kind of a text editor field. Um, they all have metadata. This is something we did in 2.5. Part of the unifying that we did was to create a common metadata structure across all the content types. So we have description and we have keywords and we have robots. And, you know, we, we have all those things. And um, language, created by, created date. I am. You know what it is? It's because the all these were supposed to be very fancy uh, coming in, I think. Oh, there we go. And more, not to mention publish up, publish down, state, or also known as published, um, access level, image. Every single one of these things has image. URLs, let me say, if you actually look at the content table, at the tables, you will see every single one of them has some kind of URL field. Web links, of course, has external URL. We have um, news feeds, of course, have an, uh, the URL for the feed that they're taking. In um, contact, it's the website of the user. Um, and in content, we had this unused URL field, which now we're using for images and URLs. Um, checked out, checked out time. Check, checked out is checked out user, and then checked out time. They all have some kind of params or attribute, attributes field that's storing a JSON string at this point of parameters. And they all have this mystery X reference field that different people use for different things. Often also a URL, but not always. Um, and many of them also have hits, some kind of hits, featured, and modified by and modified date. So it's, this is, these are more mixed. There are some unique things in com content. We have intro text, uh, we have voting, we have version, featured ordering. So those are all kind of interesting things that are actually potentially really useful for any kind of content, right? To know what version number you're on of the content, if you've edited it, um, to be able to have a teaser text. Uh, and depth, and the whole voting thing is, the way it's implemented now is very, very old and old fashioned, but these days we more usually say something like liking or plus one or whatever it is that we want to call it in Joomla, but it's some kind of rating system, potentially useful in many places. Um, and then elsewhere in ComContact we have dozen, well, it seems like hundreds of extra fields. It's not really that many, but we have a bunch of extra fields that you can use. Um, and as we showed in the Fruit Encyclopedia, you don't necessarily have to use them for the official data that, that, that they're labeled for. Um, in banners, we have lots of information about the clients and about the specific banner. and There's a lot of extra information in there. Um, and I just will say that notice web links and news feeds there's nothing special, there's nothing extra in web links or news feeds um, that's in addition to what's in basic com content. So, 
Um, so what do we mean with this uh, if we started to look at what would happen if we pulled together the data into some kind to a common table? See, I think I lost a page somewhere. Ah, this. So simplify, wait. So simplify. What if we simplify? The basic idea that has been proposed for UCM is to say, let's put all the common fields into one giant content table that's going to have a record for each content item, content ID. Um, we're going to define different types of content, and those types of content um, can have each type of content can have its own separate table or secondary table linked that that can contain the unique fields like zip code and address and phone number in com content com contact um, and so it'll contain all of the unique parts so we can really radically simplify because like I said already articles news feeds and web links they already are completely covered by the content field Except we might want to take some of the things out, but we'll see that in a second. So the magic is, and I, this is not a technical talk, but the magic of what they do in um, the APIs, this is in J, the new uh, J database object. Well, this is in J content, but it uses um, part of the, the new APIs. And what this says is, basically, whenever you load up the content table, you load up a record, check for the type, take the content ID, get the type, get the go to the special table for that type, put them together and treat it as one big table. And that's what JDatabase object does, is it basically magically takes two tables and makes them into one table. And you just and when you save, it knows save this stuff in, in the content table, save this stuff over in the supplementary table. And you know, there's no reason actually even that you only have to have two tables. You could do it with um, several tables. So with a complex extension, there's possibilities. Yes? Is it possible to add some common fields? Some? To add common fields. Um, so because you say there is a giant table. Yes. Yes. To more more common fields, yes. And in fact, I'm going to show you the eBay version of the content table, and I kind of argue, I have kind of an argument with them about that there should be some additional fields in that table. But and maybe I'll maybe I'll win on the platform, maybe I won't. But in the CMS, we can extend the table to add additional whatever additional fields we want. So I think that's what we should do because we know in the CMS we have a lot more common fields than they're saying is like really the core of what's needed in the platform. Yes. Right. Exactly. So well, it's a balance because on the one hand, if you have the common fields, then you can handle it in common ways. But you would, should only do it if they really are common. Like if they're used in every single thing. Like we use metadata in every single extension in the Joomla core, and we think that that websites, web content should have metadata, and the eBay people. Don't. <laughs> they don't want to have metadata in their core table, but we have it in every table. And I think we want to encourage users to always create metadata for every item because it's good for their sites and it's good for search and all those things. So, so we could decide, yes, we're going to make a metadata field that's in the common table. But we could decide no because we don't, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We have to prevent it getting too big. I agree with that. Exactly. Right. Right. Like we were talking about in a forum, you wouldn't need metadata for every thing. So this is why there's a. There's a, and actually, there's some metadata that's just like the title, which is in the title anyway. So, so this is why there has to be this discussion about what are the common fields going to be. Yes. Yeah, you can use uh, three tables on that. Yes. Yeah. So you use uh, one main table, then you use a uh, Joomla table, and then you use the extension. 
Exactly. Right. That's not actually strictly true, but Google is not the only client. There's a lot of debate about what Google. Well, I personally, I think you know the way we have most metadata right now. The real metadata is uh, with J uh, JSON string, and it's we're, we just have it fixed in the core. But I think it should be a plugin so that you can pick how you want to set your metadata up and using a plugin. So like if you want to be someone, because Google's not the only client for metadata. If you're running a library, right, you want to have Dublin Core. 99.9% of the world does not need Dublin Core, but if you're run, running a library, Library of Congress or whatever, you may want to use Dublin Core, or you may want to use some other system that makes sense for your use case. So I, that has been one of my goals, is to just make a plugin system for metadata, because some people, you know, just want the basics. Like I think it's really important to, to send out certain metadata, but other people not so much. And so, you know, we also had a big discussion on the ma the platform mailing list um, about language, whether language is an important common field, because language is um, the uh, uh, is a piece of metadata that's really important for Google actually. And so I think we really want to encourage people to have language in their things. Other, but then you also use language for translation management. So maybe that really belongs in the supplementary table. So there's a little, there's a lot of discussion here. Yeah. Well, categories are just going to be another content type though. So you can say categories are a content type that has language. And then if it happens, categories happen to be a content type that, use, that extends JTable nested, and they happen to be a content type that has language, we could do that, right? So that's the flexible side. It's like the more we put in the secondary tables, the more flexible it is. But then you know, we lose the consistency of UI. Like that's an element for me too, is like if we have a consistency of UI and we help like third party developers also like use that same consistent UI. So if we say these are the kinds of metadata we want or we want you to use, you know, if you're really going to take advantage of Joomla in your extension, you need to have language recorded for each item. So that's kind of prescriptive, but it's also really powerful. So this is why it's going to be 18 months of discussion to figure out exactly how it should work. Yeah. I know. So having categories as a content problem would not make any sense. We would prefer to have an archive on content, so you have content with sub-content. That would be more meaningful than you could view a content type involving sub-content elements. But the category is another dimension. Like in, in, in type of free group, we would have two dimensional systems in many ways. But, oh well, it's depending on what it is. But uh, a lot of times in Joomla, we have four dimensions. Like in the web shop, we do that a lot. We have, we, have, uh, we have menus, we have categories, we have products, we have manufacturers, we have a four dimensional system. Right. So that's, that's pretty important to be able to, to make the but do we have to make everything have categories? I think that's that's part of the question, right? So for me, since I've been playing around with, with their code, um, you know, they don't have categories. like now we make the CMS People may not realize this. Like, it actually is not necessary to have categories. Like, we could have made the CMS not force everybody, every item to be in a category, but that creates a lot more complexity for ACL and among other things. So we kind of, in the 1.6 development process, made a decision that we would force every content item to be in a category, and. If you think about it, on many websites, especially small websites, that's a, level, that's a layer that is not necessary, right? If you just have a website with 50 pages or 25 pages, which is a large number of websites, you don't need really a, a category for your contact form. Why does your contact form have to have a category? 
Why does it have to have the ACL go up a category tree, right? It's, you have one contact form for your business on your site. It's just there. So, so there's, a, there's actually an argument to say, let's stop forcing everything into categories and actually make it kind of optional to decide, do you want to embed your stuff into categories? Or you can also say you're going to make a content type that itself is hierarchical. So you could have um, you know, my new thing called stories, and then every story can have more sub-stories nested within it, right? So without having this separate infrastructure of categories. If you look at the code in the CMS, the, the most place where we get the most problems is whenever we have to switch from the item level to the category level, right? Because you have to switch the nesting, you have to switch to the right part of the tree to do the ACL, to do the publish. That's why the category query is so slow. It's when you have to make that, you have to do the joins to bring those two tables together. And then and it's not all the other, people think it's all these other little joins. It's not. It's the category table that is that causes the problem. I've spent like the last six weeks looking at this. So, so there's ways that we can rethink how whether we're actually being sensible to constantly force people into having this extra layer. So just like by getting rid of sections, a lot of people never go more than one layer deep on categories, right? Because they don't need to. So we, why even make them go one layer deep if they don't need to? Yes? So, so versioning is, can mean different things. Like in, already now we count in articles every time there's a version cha you know, change, we just don't track what was changed. But with U UCM, actually, it will be, I think, easier to create a more real versioning system where we're actually tracking changes. But someone has to build it, as always. Well, but the potential is there. Staging is what we need. Well, staging, you know, we have a great summer of code project this summer um, to build J workflow. So that's, uh, it looks great so far. I'm really happy with it. So. Um, Hopefully that will, over time, develop into something that's really going to let us do staging and workflow in a way that's very powerful. Chad. You mentioned doing like a, a content type of category, or I think of those groups, because I want to be able to mix and match. Exactly. Types exactly. So having a content type uh, for contact and a content type for newspaper right. and a content type for content right. all under the same group. Right. They're all related somehow. Right, exactly. Like one of my first websites I ever built was for a school. So it's like every classroom needs web links, it needs its calendar link, it needs it needs the teacher's email contact form. It needs and so it's like this category idea and this way of, of making silos of content makes no sense. So um, we'll we'll be able to make something kind of like a tag idea, I think, that yeah. Or grouping, exactly. Well, yeah. So, these things are all the same commonality. Exactly. You know, be able to display them that way. That way, exactly. And I think this idea of also composing, being able to pull together different content types into a single page or into a single list, but, but especially to me, what's exciting is to bring in different content types into the same page. So, um, like one of the big limitations, I don't know if I said that in this slide, that one of the big limitations we have now is you can't put two components on the same page, right? But what with content come UCM, it's not really a problem, you know? It's just a matter of us implementing, implementing how to do it. Um, so, which is always the challenge, right? When you have the, the live, you have the packages in the platform, but then someone has to build out the packages and it, the, build out the ap actual applications. So that'll be with versioning. I think tagging, this group, group tag, whatever you want to call it, idea is definitely going to be one of the big ones. And that's, that and category both are interesting to me because they require the concept of having a type that links to other types, right? So you have a type and that type is going to have like an, maybe an array of Con of content IDs of other types that it's made up of. So, and we probably want to be able to do that dynamically in some way. So, you know, we don't, uh, you know, it's easy to do by hand. And if you use the UCM that's there now, it's just really easy to build up a single page by hand. Um, so I've been saying it's like, it's, for me, it's been like building HTML pages. But what we want them to do is be able to do it dynamically. Yeah.
Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. And I, I mean, I have this idea, I, I don't have the code for it yet, but I have the concept for it, which is the comp of a content type that's called co like co composition. So like a composed page where you can kind of almost by, it could say to start anyway, do it by hand, where you can say, I want this here and this here and this here. But these are different content items, but all kind of arranged on the same, the same page. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, I think there's so much, like we all know we want to do these things. Everybody's frustrated. We have a lot of people, you know, we have like 10 different CCK systems because we all need to solve this problem, right? And we have, tag, you know, tagging systems and a lot of them are good, but none of them are like just so there that they work. And the reason that they don't, they aren't just so there and ready that they work with the existing content stuff is because the content stuff is not ready for it, right? So that's what this is going to do. It's going to make the content table and the content, content, the actual data, be much more accessible and flexible in terms of being able to just jump in and do those things that we want to do. And also, you know, just even what we're sending out with web services, for web services and those things. So we're going to be a lot more there. Um, so I just, um, this is uh, just an example I did. This was the first one. Some people saw I posted it on the mailing list. So this was my first attempt um, before the MVC changes, but the tables would still look the same. So what I did was I just um, uh, have, these are all the tables you actually need to run a uh, platform application using the, the eBay libraries. Uh, you, need, you do need the, um, the views and you do need the user data and the session data is very, very important because how they handle sessions is different, um, which I'm happy to answer questions about, but uh, you have to have sessions as part of it. Uh, but then I still have all the basic tables, but you'll see in a minute that they've changed. And um, then the core content table could look something like this. These are the tables. This is the table as they have it in the eBay SF repository. These are the fields that they have as the common fields. So um, you can see it's got the content ID, which is the old ID would have been the ID field and of the articles, and type ID, which is the link, the foreign key to a specific content type. Um, and then those basic title, alias, body, access, state. Temporary is a Boolean variable that they created because, you know, one of the frustrating things is how you have to save in order to be able to do things in Joomla. Like, until you save, you can't really know, like, what permissions someone has in an article. And until you save, a lot of plugins aren't running. Like, a lot of plugins can't run until after the first save. Or you can't do ordering. Um, you can't use the ordering field until after the first save. So what they did was to, in JContent, when they create an article, it creates a temporary record. That means you don't have to save. All those things run. All the plugins run, they load up, the ordering is there, everything is there, because it, it's a saved temporary record. And then if you cancel, it deletes the record. This is the Boolean that marks it. So it says, cancel, okay, drop that record, uh, save, make it not temporary anymore. So this is a new field um, uh, featured. So, so they have in the core table featured all the created date and user by user and the modified date and user checked out session and checked out um, user ID. It's really cool. Like what they do with checked out in J content is to um, it, it'll automatically clean up it, expired sessions. So if, if someone was editing and they left the file open or they browsed, they used the browser back and left the file checked out, when the session expires, it'll automatically be checked back in again. So you'd solve that problem. Uh, the 
published start date, published end date. Uh, they have likes, which is kind of like what's well, likes uh, <laughs> uh, as part of the core table. V revision config is the common con uh, JSON configuration um, of string. Uh, they have a media field, which is also a JSON field, very similar. It's exactly the same, in fact, as the images field that we have now in our income content. And the rules, so now instead of having the rules for each article stored in the ass assets table, the rules are being stored right there with the item. And every item is going to have rules stored with it. I mean, of course, you cannot make any rules, and then it'll be blank. Yeah? Yeah. You can call it mugging, but it's like it, it, it can be a, a class in the, in the code. It doesn't need to be a plugin in terms of human lines. But what I'm talking about is you can could have a, a, a content type which would just say, okay, I have a text, I have image, I have this, and this. All these would be stored in separate. Uh, I mean, they could totally normalize setting. So in other words, you wouldn't have a record of in the media table. So I, I think it's always a trade-off, right, between the performance hit that you take when you make a bigger table with more columns versus the performance that you take when you have to do a million joins, right? So, and this is, the, this is where they came to at, at eBay, and I think people, this is the discussion, part of the discussion we have to have is what's gonna go into the common table, what's not gonna go into the common table, what's gonna be made into a secondary table, how many secondary tables, and we're gonna have to do a lot of performance work, I think, just to figure out what's the most efficient way to do these things with some big data sets, so we need like big real world data sets to actually test some of this with. Um, of course, I mean, I will say, some of these definitely could be shaped by plugins, like the media field, you could have be pluggable, so you can handle it in different ways. So, yeah. It could be. Yeah. Well, even body, it's interesting to me because you don't always need body. Like I have in my UCM application that I made, I have an immediate, I have a type called image. And I don't put anything in the body. I just put something in the media field. So I think. I put the description. For I would put that actually in the um, media. No, no, because the media field can hold the description. Media field doesn't have to just be image name. I mean, the media field can come with it's JSON. So it's like images in your like the your the images fields in com content right now. So if you look at those images field, you know we have the image, the actual image, right? But then we have the alt, and we have the title, and we have caption. So it's like all there, right in the JSON. Yeah. Okay, so I just, let me just show you the rest of the tables and then we can talk afterwards if, outside if we need to. Um, so this is the types table. Types table really, really important because this is going to be what links the main table to the individual tables. So this is the basic type, you know, the basic structure. And I just put over here kind of the example of what they actually look like because you see the table column actually tells you what table that you're linking to. Um, what for the secondary table. And then the secondary table could have more. I mean, I think you could be, like, this is very simple. This is a very simple model. Um, but you, um, and you can see that I've actually added types. So we have the famous fruit encyclopedia, and I actually made a new type called encyclopedia. So I actually took the alt layout for the alternative layout for the encyclopedia, and I used it for a separate to make a separate unique layout. And same thing for the photo gallery that's in the Australian Park site, there's that photo gallery. So that's why I made the images type 
the image type. So that's what I'm using for um, the photo gallery. So I like kind of took alternative layouts and turned them into types, which I, it's really nice to be able to do that because you can make the, I mean, one of the problems with the fruit encyclopedia is it, it just really looks messy because it has the crazy names for the fields. Um, this is uh, what the, this is of course the biggest would be in the core. The biggest secondary table is the contact, take contact details. So this would just be basically everything else, all the leftovers. And see, I, and this is why migration is not going to be so bad. Because see that ID field I left there? That's my old IDs. Like I've imported all sample data to this. So I kept all my old IDs from com contact in ID field. So it has a unique ID. It's the old ID. My, I can route it. I can deal with it. Um, and then I put all the extra, all the extra fields. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, stop. Lots to do. We got to work on this core table versus secondary table. We have to create a UI and come to the roadmap meeting. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.